In this video, we use the chi-squared test to test for an association between the two factors that define a contingency table. The contingency table that we have here shows the number of pupils, male and female, who prefer different subjects, science, English or history. So, for example, 11 boys prefer science and 20 girls prefer English. And we wish to test whether the distribution of preferred subjects is different between the boys and the girls, between the males and the females. And to do this, we need to calculate expected values of preferences for science, English and history, assuming that there was no difference in the distribution of preferences between the different subjects between the males and the females. And to calculate expected values, we have to go back to the observed values and calculate both column totals and row totals. So the total in the first column is just the addition of these two values, which we can then copy across to all the other columns. The row totals, we can just use the sum function to add up the data in the three columns so that we find we've got a total of 46 males, 44 females, a total of 29 people prefer science, 38 English and 23 history. And if we copy this summation down again, we find that we have a total of 90 pupils in this case. So to calculate the expected numbers in each category, we will start with the males who prefer science. And we know that there are a total of 46 males. So we will enter the 46 value from E3. But the overall proportion of people who prefer science is in the ratio of 29 to 90. Assuming no difference in this distribution, we would take the number of males and we will say a proportion of 29 out of 90 will prefer science. So we calculate that the expected number of males who prefer science would be 14.82. It is acceptable to have non-integer values in expected values because these are purely theoretical calculations, whereas, of course, the observed values will always be integer. Right, now we need to copy the calculation of this expected value to all the other categories. And to do this, we must lock any reference to the column E, which includes the row totals, and any reference to row 5, which includes the column totals. So in our formula, we will put a dollar in front of the E, a dollar in front of the 5, and then a dollar in front of this E, and also this 5. We can now copy this formula all the other cells and this now maintains references both to column totals and row totals. Now giving us the expected values in each of these categories. In this case the ratio of values science, English and history is going to be the same for the males and females and the ratio of distribution between males and females in each category is also the same. We can confirm this again just by calculating totals for the columns and then using sum for the rows so that we see for our expected ratios we now have the same row totals and the same column totals. The only difference is that the distribution of values 
is the same in expected values for both male and female. And we wish to test whether the difference in distributions in the observed values is significantly different from the expected values or whether it could have occurred by chance. And for this, we use the chi-squared calculation. And for each cell, we must calculate a chi-squared contribution. And this will be equal to the difference between the observed and the expected value. And this difference must be squared, up arrow 2, and divided by the expected value. And we can copy this to all the other cells to get the chi-squared contribution from each cell. And then the overall chi-squared value is the sum of all of these contributions, which will be equal to the sum from B15 down to D16, a chi-squared value of 7.015. If there is a large difference between observed and expected values, we would expect to have a large chi-squared value. So we wish to test whether this chi-squared value is too large to have occurred by chance. So we will perform the hypothesis test and then the degrees of freedom for this test is equal to the number of columns minus one, which would be two, multiplied by the number of rows minus one, which is just one, so this will be two times one, which will be degrees of freedom two. We can enter the critical value, which will be the upper or right-hand probability of the distribution. And for this, we must enter the significance probability, which for 95% is 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom in this case which is 2 giving a value of 5.991 and as the observed chi-squared value is greater than the critical value we can say that this observed value is unlikely to have occurred by chance we will reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a significant difference between the distribution of subject preferences for the males compared to the females. We can also perform this hypothesis test and derive a p-value by using the chi-squared distribution function in which we must enter our calculated chi-squared value and the number of degrees of freedom giving a p-value of 0.03 which because this is less than 0 0.05, we again reject the null hypothesis. There is a significant association between the two factors of subject and gender. We can perform the chi-squared calculation in a different way. We can use the chi-squared test directly, which requires us to enter the, first of all, the actual range or the observed values and then the expected range of values, and it returns the same significant p-value of 0 0.030.